Previously on Hearthstone Theory. Instead, I'll propose the following as a solution. Next expansion gave Druid a few incredibly powerful, aggressive cards. So, Blizzard should give Druid an offering they can't refuse. A powerful 2-drop that runs counter to wild growth. This time on Hearthstone Theory. Called it... Greetings and welcome to Hearthstone Theory. It's here, the time we've all been waiting for, the reveal season for the new expansion, Rastakhan's Rumble. With the announcement a little over a week ago, I had two major thoughts. First, that cinematic trailer is f***ing awesome. Here it's It's just so majestically masculine. Second, the announcement trailer that came with it was... Don't be weird, Ben. Blizzard, please, never make poor Peter Whalen wear a tiger costume ever again. The image haunts my nightmares. But with the announcement came new cards and new mechanics, and I'm sure several of you are wondering my opinion of them. Now one thing I want to note before we get started is that I won't cover this expansion quite as thoroughly as I have covered previous expansions. I simply don't have the time to make quality videos that cover every single card. My analysis will be a little slower, but also a little more directed. That said, today we'll look at the mechanics of Rastakhan's Rumble, as well as the general themes that are being shown with some of the cards and information that we currently have. By the end of this analysis, I'll propose my idea of how the upcoming expansion will affect the game what will work, what will fail, and overall how successful the expansion will be. If you see a different future for this expansion, feel free to comment below and show me your beliefs. While you're down there, hit one of those colorful and interestingly shaped buttons. Come on, you know you want to, they're so colorful and interestingly shaped. Anyways, let's begin. The very first impression received when examining Rastakhan's Rumble is actually quite simple. Every class has a unique identity. Some may roll their eyes at this statement. Of course every class has an identity, that's how every expansion works. However, I would argue that this expansion will put a greater focus on this class identity than previous expansions. Penulus, how could you possibly be confident in this, you may wonder. And the answer to that is, Blizzard is practically shouting it at us. Looks like the first match is about to start. The Sharks up against Krogwa's Frog. Okay, so that's Rogue and Shaman, right? That's right. At the same time as this, we have our first mechanic of a sort. Every class will receive one Spirit card, which is a small zero attack minion with an effect tied to it, and stealth for one turn. The stealth simply gives the spirit slightly better survival odds, though it is still weak to control AoE cards. The effects the spirits give are designed to reflect the theme of the class, as represented by an animal. The spirit of the shark for rogues, the spirit of the bat for warlocks, and so on and so forth. While only two spirits have been revealed so far, it's been cemented by Blizzard that each spirit represents an animal, each animal represents a team, and each team has a champion and a loa. It's not unreasonable to assume that these three cards for each class would work together for synergies, and that some of the other cards given to the class would further boost this core concept. That's not to say that other card strategies won't exist. Warlock RA has their spirit and their loa revealed, but they also have Void Contract. A card that is amazing and gives vibes akin to the Thanos snap, but sadly only works in very particular control decks. A card that I am glad exists, but don't anticipate seeing much of. Oh, for any of you who don't know, this is my rating system. The simple version is that the mana cost of the rating is what I give the card on a scale of 1 to 5. I have a video from a few months ago that goes over all of the ratings in more depth, but I have added a few more and changed a few aspects of the whole system. I'll go over these changes more another time. Anyways, judging the mechanics each of the classes are presented with will allow us to better see how Blizzard intends to help the class on a whole. Will the class get a mechanic akin to Freeze Shaman, useless and a waste of time? Or will they get something more like Jade Druid, overly powerful and annoying to play against? There's no way of knowing, Penulus, you may be saying, but if we do enough digging, we'll find that's not the case. Hints Blizzard has provided can allow us to hypothesize some of these mechanics, and compare that to some of the cards we've been presented so far. So let's go down the list, starting with Druid. Druid has the Spirit of the Raptor, the Champion Lodi, and the Loa Gonk. Describing this team, we have the information, Lodi prefers the company of her dinosaur Loa Gonk and other scaled companions. Druid will discover that she's a master of shape-shifting and claw-to-hand combat. 
Compare that to Savage Striker, the only Druid card so far revealed. It seems like Druid will be getting mechanics that incorporate giving your hero attack. Mechanics that will hopefully put Claw, Nash, and Bite to shame. Savage Striker would be next to useless with an effect similar to that. But with such effects, it may prove useful. And from the sound of how Lodi will be portrayed, as well as the possibility of the Spirit of the Raptor and Gonk further synergizing with it, we're looking at a more aggressive druid being given tools this expansion. Perhaps I'm biased because this aligns with my predictions in my last video, or perhaps this just proves that I'm super smart and you guys should listen to everything I say. Time will tell. Moving on, Hunter. For the Hunter Champion and Loa, Warlord Zul'jin has got a special knack for the mystical side of the hunt, and has the Lynx Loa, Halazi. Rumor has it that Zul'jin is the hero card for this expansion, but I don't make theories based off of rumors. I just spread those rumors. Other than that, cards revealed so far are pretty by the numbers, though this is a good time to talk about Overkill. The effect tied to Overkill only takes place if the card is used to do more damage than is necessary to kill a minion. As such, we can translate Baited Arrow to deal 2 damage. If that kills the target, summon a 5-5 Devil Soar. If not, deal 1 more damage. That's not bad, it compares easily to Bane of Doom, but it's not exceptional either. Changing gears over to Soul Thrays, this overkill card translates into a 6 mana 3-4 weapon with multiple attacks per turn. Some may look to the days of Fool's Bane and proclaim this card to be a below average like that one, but to them I say, what do you think of Arcanite Reaper? This card for 1 mana more is able to do almost as much damage, with the added benefit of carving through small taunt minions. Small taunt minions being the bane of every aggressive deck ever. So this card is pretty average, for decks concentrating on keeping tempo and going face. Anyways, that pretty much covers Hunter, Overkill, and Warrior. All we know for Warriors is that they got Rhinos. Neat. So onwards to Mage. While we have little info on Janelai and the Dragonhawk Spirit, we do have Malakras, an 8-mana 5-5 draw 2-5 to five cards, usually 3-5. to five. That seems pretty mundane, and it is, but there are still uses for this. For example, Quest Mage could guarantee a second quest, which would be an interesting synergy to say the least. A third copy of some cards, or a second copy of some legendaries, could likewise provide some flexibility. In fact, I'd say that's interesting enough to warrant changing this rating slightly. Other than that, we'll have to see what's in store for Mage, but it seems like their odd deck may be getting a bit more ammunition. Then again, they don't have Mana Worm anymore, so it ain't perfect. Little information exists for Priest and Shaman, though here are my ratings for what has come out. Which leaves Paladin, Rogue, and Warlock. Rogue Sharks appear to focus on battle cries and combos, while Captain Hook Tusk and some other cards appear to concentrate on Pirates. It's hard to say how much overlap there will be between the Sharks and the Pirates, though a neutral card revealed implies that there will be some. All in all, we can't quite tell how strong or weak these archetypes will be yet, so here are my ratings, and let's move on. Paladin has some interesting ideas going for it, and so far all of them seem to revolve around the combo control concept. Considering Paladin is currently dominated by the Fast and Furious Odd and Even decks, this is a pretty good thing. The description of the champion implies that it will incorporate healing, and spells of that nature will likely be further boosted by the Tiger Spirit. Throw this in with Immortal Prelate, which while weak to silence goes beautifully with a long-term deck, and even with silence, your opponent is silencing a 2-drop. So all in all, it can be quite useful. Couple that with Time Out, which is an absolute beauty of a card. If you have an empty board, this is better than Frost Nova. If you don't, it's still better than Evasion. While not as easy to play as Ice Block, it still provides the same security, arguably more. Definitely a strong choice for a control archetype, which is further boosted by Shervala. This card is merely decent, but I do want to mention the combo. Get to the bottom of your deck, Shervala, Baleful Banker, Holy Wrath for a 7 mana 25 burst damage. That will kill all but warriors, druids, and really smart priests. Put all this together and I can say that I'm pretty confident in Control Paladin's chances. Then again, I've said that before. Finally, Warlock. I've mentioned before that Blizzard should just look to giving Warlock some weaker cards, and it appears that is the exact course of action that they are taking. The bat appears to revolve around hand buffing, and as I've mentioned before, hand buffing doesn't work. Uh, Penulus, what about soul infusion? Hand buffing doesn't work! On a more serious tone, yes. Soul Infusion is pretty good thanks to it giving the player the ability to aim the buff. With Spirit of the Bat, no such luxury. 
while Harik the Bat is clearly a slower card that demands this synergy. Building an entire mechanic on the back of a weak card is not the greatest plan, sad to say. So Warlock has gone another expansion with a subpar legendary and mechanic, which given their power right now is only fair. And with that, all is covered. We have an idea of what Blizzard is tossing our way, Pirate Rogue, Control Paladin, Tempo Druid, and more. With all this in mind, how good or poor will this expansion be? It's worth knowing that it will take just one card to completely change the meta as we know it, and we still have 118 cards to be revealed, so any prediction made here will be dubious at best. However, I feel confident enough to give my prediction that Rastakhan's Rumble will be the greatest expansion and meta since Whispers of the Old Gods. To start off the evidence for this claim, let's look at the Boomsday meta, how it worked and how it didn't. While the number of decks that I've seen play has easily reached an all-time high, players have been discontent for two reasons. Meta polarity, and a general feeling of decks being unchanged over time. I've explored these concepts in previous Hearthstone theories and quick takes, and as such I feel like I have a thorough idea of how the game got to this point, and why it got to this point. Starting with meta polarity, Quests and Hero Cards and Baku and Gen have all contributed to making decks that are strong in certain circumstances, but weak in others. This was deliberate by Blizzard, as evidenced by statements the staff gave in response to criticism. However, as I've previously explored, certain cards that may deserve a nerf have been avoided by Blizzard due to those cards being a check on meta polarity. The main example, Spreading Plague, keeps combo druids safe against aggro decks, particularly token-style ones. This shows that Blizzard are keeping an eye on meta polarity, and will probably avoid having it go out of hand. In the end, meta polarity probably won't change much, because it's part of what has allowed this vast and diverse meta. If every deck has a weakness, then the playing field is naturally more even. However, the other concern is certain decks and cards remaining prevalent for an overabundance of time. The Death Knight hero cards have been around for over a year. Cards like Fungalmancer have become cornerstone pieces in aggro all while Odd Paladin and Odd Rogue continue to be two of the more powerful deck archetypes for four metas running. And that's not even counting other decks like the Druid Collective, Even Shaman. Aggro Mage also counts, even though it's only surviving the Mana Worm nerf thanks to frickin' Murlocs. With that said, I believe Rastakhan will change all that for one simple reason. It will be stronger. As I have claimed in the past, the last expansions of the year are stronger than previous ones, by design of Blizzard. With less time of the meta, Mean Streets, Kobolds, and Rastakhan need to make a bigger impact than the expansions previous if they're going to measure up. Thus, these new cards and combinations, whatever they might be, will en masse rival cards we currently have, and will either supersede them or, at the very least, create alternative options. At the same time, complain about Boomsday all you want, but we cannot deny that it had variety. Druids exempt, of course. This isn't Blizzard getting lucky, this is Blizzard making their luck. The team for Hearthstone has done everything in its power to make this the most diverse meta possible, and they have succeeded. And after doing that, they come out saying Rastakhan will reintroduce Pirate Rogue, give Paladin even more control pieces, make sure Warlocks continue to get garbage, give Druid, that's right, Druid, an aggressive 2-drop to rival Wild Growth? Hell yeah, I'm optimistic! While Blizzard's plan has its faults and has taken its time through low power expansions to get to this point, Rastakhan's Rumble is the climax to this story, the final powerful expansion that will finish off this chapter of Hearthstone's history. Once again, I will stress, it takes just one card to prove me wrong, to make this expansion overpowered rather than just powerful enough. But my previous theories, the behaviors of Blizzard, and the announcement of the new expansion all point in the same direction. Rastakhan will be powerful. Rastakhan will keep the meta diverse. Rastakhan will be the perfect conclusion to the last year of developments. Perhaps the meta will still be polarized, and perhaps a few old decks will still be relevant. But the overall game, from a big picture standpoint, I have incredibly high hopes for. The ball's in your court, Blizzard. Don't drop it.